another one. You just watched a bird vomit its own stomach oils out. You weirdo. Called the Fulmar, which roughly translates into foul gold, you need a restraining order on it pronto. Imagine this, you're a skewer bird who's on the brink of death, surviving on mere molecules of glucose when all of a sudden you finally spot some food. With tears flowing out of your eyes, you gracefully dive down thinking that you've got one more day, one more chance to accomplish all of your dreams. And then you get smothered in the most vile, putrid, orange substance known to man. Now while getting covered in goo isn't the end of the world, it sure is if you ever want to fly again, as the goo has rendered your wings completely useless. But hey, still no big deal, right? You can just go clean it off in the ocean. No! Once a bird begins to try and clean itself, it'll realize two things. One, the water can't get the oil out, and two, the oil means it can't get out the water. As in it's sinking. It's fucking dying. Just to recap, the Fulmar's goo not only renders birds flightless, but it also decreases their buoyancy to a point where they can no longer float. Anyways, the real superpower is that a hatchling Fulmar chick was seen breaking a tiny hole out of his shell and then immediately puking everywhere. Bro took one whiff of that polluted air and lost his shit. Now if you're anything like me, you're probably a human, and we humans live a very long life compared to most animals on earth. But man, we are absolutely nothing compared to this animal. I mean, we may as well start digging the grave now. You might be wondering, what animal could possibly live that long? And I'll give you a hint, it's right there in that picture. You're right, it is the jellyfish. Man, I knew you'd get it right. Named the immortal jellyfish, this creature can theoretically live forever. And to explain this, here's a quick summary of a jellyfish's life. Egg turns into planula. Planula sticks to random surface. Planula turns into polyp. Polyp starts cloning jellyhead. Said jellyhead gains freedom. Jelly live, jelly die. Now normally this is a straightforward path of life, but if the immortal jellyfish starts getting a little stressed, it'll revert straight back to Goo Goo Gaga mode. That's right, it'll just shrink itself into a blob and float to the ground, and within two days it'll become a polyp again, producing more and more clones of itself asexually. This process, called transdifferentiation, is so rare to see at this scale that you'd think it'd be the most overpowered shit ever. But unfortunately, it dies to sharks, fishes, turtles, penguins, anemones, other jellyfish, disease, injuries. I mean, how are you gonna evolve immortality but still die to a fucking sea slug. But seriously, these goobers in captivity have been able to relive their life cycle up to 10 times. Which isn't really immortality, but hey, that's why we use the magical words in theory. On the subject of sea animals, let's talk about the mantis shrimp. If you've ever seen a video of these sea roaches, you'd understand one thing, which is to stay the absolute fuck away from them. Mantis shrimp can be divided into two main types called spearers and smashers. Spearers tactically use their claws to tear chunks of flesh off, while smashers they kinda just punch shit. But this shrimp's punch is no ordinary punch. Their punch accelerates faster than a gunshot and can disintegrate a healthy crab into a not so healthy crab. Now if that impact doesn't get the job done, don't worry. Cause their punch is so fast that it generates cavitation bubbles. These are bubbles made out of water which then implode and create a fast jet stream. This burst alone can stun and even kill smaller fish. The most broken combo move in the sea. To top it all off, they're also extremely territorial. Can't really blame them though, cause the one time they welcomed red lobsters it ended in all you can eat. <laughs> Anyways, did you know that the mantis shrimp can see the most colors out of all animals? To give you a perspective, we humans have three color cones in our eyes. These fools got 16! Because of this, they're able to see near infrared and ultraviolet light. But unlike their punching abilities, this power actually has a major drawback, as they're unable to distinguish any type of detail. So you're telling me you can't see the difference between orange and red? Seriously? On the flip side of vision, chameleons are quite interesting when it comes to their appearance. Chameleons can turn into a whole spectrum of different colors, which isn't really used to blend in with its environment, but instead to communicate with other chameleons. When a male chameleon is looking for a mate, he'll have bright colors plastered all over his body. On the other hand, if chameleons are stressed, cold, or pregnant, they might turn to a darker color. Okay, 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 but seriously, chameleon colors can vary greatly depending on the species or individual, so stop your typing there, bucko. Oh, wait. Oh wait, that's kind of fact. The weirdest power that these reptilians have is the ability to control each eye individually. That means that while looking at its environment with one eye, it could track a little bug with the other. And as if these creatures needed any more talents, they also have the ability to shoot out their tongue. But these aren't your everyday lickers, alright? These things can accelerate up to 2,590 meters per second. Their tongues are also up to two times the length of their body, which is the first time a fact has violated me. 
But out of all reptilians, this barely even scratches the surface. Just imagine walking peacefully when boom, a fucking snake falls on you. But nonchalantly. This 2-4 to four foot long snake called the flying snake is a physical embodiment of survival of the fittest. While these doohickeys are on trees, they'll bend themselves into a J shape and fling themselves majestically into the air. And then start spazzing out. But these creatures aren't as dumb as they seem, they actually create increased air pressure under their body to help them glide through the wind. In fact, the dynamics are comparably better than their competition, the flying squirrel, which literally has wings for arms. The worst part is that they can aim their landing too. An extent. Let's just say they don't always make it. Regardless, they're so good that they could glide down 100 meters vertically, a freaky trait for something that has zero limbs. Luckily for us mortals, these snakes are only mildly venomous and can't hurt us too bad. Now if you're looking for something a bit more concerning, a bit more gruesome, then let me introduce you to the horned lizard. These fellas start off unassuming, mostly relying on their camouflage to stay hidden in sandy regions. But if a predator finds them, they might do a little huffing and puffing to look bigger. Listen man, you don't want to mess with me. I'm warning you. Don't make me fucking. Yes, this lizard's defense mechanism is shooting blood out of its eye. I mean, out of everything, you chose to do that? But wait, how does it shoot blood, you may ask? By blocking blood flow until they rupture their blood vessels. So yeah, there's no emergency supply of blood, these lizards just rely on depravity. Knowing this, they're still able to shoot blood up to 5 feet away. That's far as fuck. Now if you're a predator that just got covered in blood, you'll either think the blood is disgusting or just be so turned off that you leave and never come back. Unless you're a bird. Birds still go and eat them. Some unfortunate predators even have the experience of putting the lizard into their mouth, only to get blasted from within. As for us humans, scientists have found out that the blood causes inflammation if squirted into the eye. Looks like somebody forgot their safety goggles. Another scientist figured out that the blood is slightly bitter but overall not too bad? Okay, so who did it? Who licked the blood off the floor? On a less gory note, let's talk about the animal equivalent of Ditto, aka the Mimic Octopus. These imposters are able to disguise as multiple different animals at a moment's notice. For example, when faced with a damselfish, they'll swim into a hole, stick out two arms, and create a wave motion to resemble a sea snake. The damselfish, being the dumbass it is, will be so frightened that it will swim away. What's crazy is that these octopi only become sea snakes around the damselfish, meaning they have a whole arsenal of costumes under their belt for different situations. Oh shit, what the fuck? Now if you're wondering which disguise they use the most often, it is definitely the flatfish. These creatures regularly swim like one too, and the reason for this is that there are a lot of venomous flatfish species. Pair that with the fact that they feed in flat sand regions and boom, nobody fucking with it. They're also able to disguise as a lionfish and jellyfish, but their most evil impersonation is 100% the crab. Rather than using their mimicking as a defense, these octopi will be doing a little bit of seducing. Not only will they look like a crab, but they'll also perform some dirty, juicy, raunchy crab movements. Upon seeing this, the crab will go hog wild, drool slipping out the lips type of crazy. <sighs> Come on man, you can do it. You can do it. Oh uh, hey, I just thought you looked beautiful this e- Remember guys, crabs and sex does not mix very well. But you know what does mix well? Crows and being smart. These birds could be compared to a 7 year old in intelligence. Which now that I think about it is still pretty fucking dumb. Nonetheless, one specific crow species called the New Caledonian Crow is basically the Da Vinci of the bird world. While Da Vinci was designing simple things such as the parachute and the triple barrel cannon, the New Caledonian Crow was busy crafting complex tools such as the barbed acuminate offshoot. Or as some people might say, a sharp stick. With a hook. This unparalleled brilliance is then matched with the grippiest of all mandibles, the most precise of all bills, and used to poke around in trees. Once the stick has made its way into grub territory, it'll attract a poor unsuspecting larvae. And like a seasoned fisherman, the crow will reel the stick out the moment it feels a touch, scoring a delectable meal before doing it all over again. At this point, you might be wondering why they even go through all this effort. I mean, they're able to eat a wide range of food without sticks anyways. Well, some research does point towards them using it just because it's more fun. Which sounds wrong as fuck, but I'm still gonna believe it. What makes these birds even more freaky is that researchers have observed them creating tools from materials they've never seen before. Which means they've gotta be smarter than a 7 year old. I mean, I couldn't even carry the fucking one when I was that age. 